Feast your eyes on these integrals. The integral of sine squared x dx, sine squared x, cosine x dx, tangent x, secant squared x dx. These are trigonometric integrals. And we're going to look at um, some approaches to how we could deal with these, finding the antiderivatives for these ones. And we'll call these trigonometric integrals. Integrals that look like this, we'll refer to those as trigonometric integrals. Now, the key to, to uh, dealing with trigonometric integrals is trigonometric identities. In particular, there's the power-reducing identities for sine and cosine. So you need to be familiar with those. Those need to be something in your knowledge pot that you can readily uh, draw on. So uh, here's the power-reducing formula for sine, the power-reducing formula for cosine. And then remember the Pythagorean identities. The one for, you know, sine squared x plus cosine squared equals 1. And, you know, the alternative forms of that, we could solve for cosine and get this, solve for sine and get this. And then remember the Pythagorean identities for uh, tangent and secant. See? Okay? So these are the identities that you need to have in your mind because we're going to refer to those. Now, I want to start off by looking at how do we deal with integrals involving even powers of sine or cosine. For example, this one right here, sine squared x dx. This is an even power. Now, we could use the same approach if this were sine to the fourth, sine to the sixth. The point is it's an even power of sine, and there's nothing else in here with it. Also, we could use uh, if this were cosine. So everything I'm doing here for sine, I could do for cosine, only with cosine, the identity is a little different. So, so here's how we proceed. This is sine squared x, and we have a power-reducing formula for sine. It's 1 half, 1 minus cosine 2x. So that's what I want to do. I want to rewrite this as 1 half, 1 minus cosine 2x. Because we can deal with these linear situations. Like, we don't know how to deal with cosine, I mean sine squared, but... Cosine 2x, we can integrate that. We can find the antiderivative for that. So, so let's see how we, how we do this. We've got 1 half, the antiderivative of 1, of course, is just x, minus, now here we go. Since this is just linear here, we can find the antiderivative for cosine and then divide by 2. So this would be sine 2x divided by 2. There we have it. Yeah, that's it and then plus C. So that's all we have to do right there. Now, of course, you could, you could simplify it, uh, you know, you, a little bit. You could say, well, this is 1 half X minus 1 fourth sine 2X plus C. If you want it, you know, not in the factored form like that. If you just want to multiply it out, that's how it would look. So the key is when we, when we have this sine raised to an even power, we can use this power-reducing formula. Uh, now, I want to uh, go uh, uh, a, a step further, and let's suppose that it's not squared. Let's suppose it's to the fourth power. Okay, so let's look at that. So I've got cosine to the fourth. So I switched off to cosine, but what I say about cosine and sine, they're the same, just a little bit different identity. Now, notice that the cosine squared identity is uh, plus here. That's how these differ. Okay, So this is going to be, let, let, let's see here what I have. I have 1 half, uh, well, yeah, 1 half, 1 plus cosine 2x times 1 half, 1 plus cosine 2x. All this dx. So see what I've, what I've done here. This right here is cosine squared. And this right here is also cosine squared. So it's like I, I split these up. See? So I, I, maybe that's not the way you would have done it. Maybe you would have written cosine squared squared, but I just wrote it this way. Cosine squared times cosine squared. So I, what I did was I rewrote cosine to the fourth as cosine squared times cosine squared. And then here is the identity. See. Now I'm going to 
put these this one half times one half that's one fourth. So so here I here I have this. I have one fourth. And now I'm going to multiply this out. Okay. So here I go. One times one. Uh, plus cosine two x. And then plus another one. So that's two cosine two x. See. And then plus cosine squared 2x. See, all I did multiplied out 1 plus cosine 2x squared. You get 1, 2 times the product, and then the cosine squared on the end. Okay, so this is what I have now. Now, part of this is easy for me to uh, deal with, like this 1, this 2 cosine 2x. So, so let me just, let me write this out. Let me split it apart here. So I've got, there's the dx. Okay, so you might not want to go to the, through the detail that I'm going through here, but I'm just wanting to make clear what's going on. Okay. So what I did was I just split up this integral. See, there's the 1, here's the 2 cosine 2x, and there's the cosine squared, okay? Now, it's no problem for me to get these. So, so look what happens. This is going to be, this first integral is just going to be 1 fourth x. No worries there. This one here, let's see, this 2 and the 1 fourth, that becomes 1 half. So here's 1 half times... Okay, this is going to be sine 2x over 2. See, I just got the antiderivative of cosine 2x. So antiderivative of cosine is sine, and then the t divide by the derivative of the inside. Okay, so there's that. Now we have this one over here to deal with. Okay, so I want to use my identity, that power-reducing identity, this is cosine squared 2x. So here I go. I'm going to do 1 half, 1 plus cosine. Now, it's not going to be 2x in here. It's going to be 4x. Remember, you double what's in there. So if I had cosine squared x, this is going to be 2x. If I have cosine squared 2x, this is going to be cosine 4x. I double what's in there. So you have to be careful not to mess up there. So... So let's see what we have. We have one fourth x plus one half. Well, let's do this. Let's do. Let's go ahead and make that one fourth sine two x. Okay. Plus one eighth, and this is going to be x plus one fourth sine four x. Plus C. Yeah, there we go. So so let's go ahead and put everything together now. We've got one fourth X plus one fourth sine two X. Okay. Plus one eighth X plus one thirty second sine four X. Okay. Now, of course. This is, notice I've got one-fourth there and one-eighth there. I could put those together. So I might as well do that. So this is uh, three-eighths x plus one-fourth sine two x plus one-thirty-second sine four x. There we have it. And what we've what we've done then is we've dealt with the situation where we have sine or cosine being raised to an even power. Okay, now let's think about odd powers of sine or cosine. So uh, let's think about this. Let's, let's suppose we have sine cubed x. We want to find this antiderivative. Well, here's, here's what we keep in mind in a situation like that. We, we kind of... 
remember, there's a lot of art and uh, creativity that goes into integration. But you think about this and you, you realize that this could be written this way. I could write this as sine squared times sine x. In other words, I could kind of split it off. And you might think, well, why would you do such a thing? For this reason, remember that sine squared x equals 1 minus cosine squared x. And still, you might not see where I'm going with this, but think about this. If, if I substitute this sine squared x, if I, if I write this as 1 minus cosine squared x, and then I've got sine x here, think about what this means. I've now got a situation where I have cosine and sine together in this integral. And remember that the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So what if I let u equal cosine? Well, then du is equal to negative sine, right? Negative sine x dx. Well, look, there's sine x dx there. So, uh, you know, I, I don't have negative sine x dx, but I can write that as negative du equals sine x dx. Well, now I've got a substitution that I can work with. So look, here's what I've got. I've got 1 minus u squared times du. Yeah, look, sine x dx. Well, negative sine x dx, and I put the negative out here. Well, this is, you know, a baby could deal with that integral. We, we just got u minus one-third u cubed. There we have it. So see, we just need we just need it to do a little cre be a little bit creative before we decided to tackle the integral. You know, split it up like this, and then we could use our uh, identities. Now let's consider this integral. Let's suppose that we have sine squared x cosine x. Now actually, this is a a simpler integral than this previous one because now if you're not careful though after you're used to you know doing a little work first here and evaluating integrals like this you may come to one like this and forget the basics if you'll notice this is just sine squared x cosine all you have to do here is just recognize well I can just do a straight up substitution let u equal sine x then du equals cosine x. Ah, and, and look at this. This is just going to be u squared du. So really simple. So we don't want to forget the basics. We don't want to forget just, sometimes you can just do a substitution immediately. But other times, you know, you have to, you have to do a little bit of uh, playing around with it. Just a tad. Okay, so let's look at uh, an integral where, uh, involving sine and cosine where it's a little bit more complicated. So we have cosine cubed x, let's say, and sine squared x dx. Okay, so we've got this integral. And what we did here isn't going to work because we've got... Uh, cosine cubed, and we've got sine squared. So I can't just let u be cosine or let u be sine, and, and then du be the rest of it. But we still want to be able to use our Pythagorean identities like we, we did up here. Notice what I did up here. I just peeled off one of the sines and then rewrote the sine squared as 1 minus cosine squared. So maybe I can do something like that down here. Let's, let's try that. Let, let's think about this. I've got this cosine. Let, let's just rewrite it. So I've got cosine squared x, sine squared x, and then I'm going to put that extra cosine here on the end. This is, this is an approach that might work. See what I'm thinking about. 
I'm thinking about if I have all everything in terms of sine except this cosine x dx. Then I can let u be sine, and then du is cosine x dx. So what I would like to do, that my thinking is this. I'm going to use the Pythagorean identities, this Pythagorean, or, or, you know, the Pythagorean identity, this one, this one right here, to see if I can get everything in terms of sine and then except for this one cosine here at the end. So, so dig how this is going to go. Cosine squared, I'm going to write that as 1 minus sine squared. And then I've got sine squared there. And then I've got cosine x dx. See? Now, see, this was my goal. I want to now be able to let u equal sine x. Because du will then be cosine x dx. Ah, that's what I wanted. Because, so dig this. Here's what I've got going now. I've got... 1 minus u squared, okay, times u squared, times cosine, oh, times du. <laughs> there it goes. See? Cosine x dx, I just write as du. Now, this is simple. So we've got us a, a nice simple integral. This is u to the fourth. Well, it's u squared. Minus, let me go ahead and write that. I was thinking ahead. <laughs> so this is u squared minus u to the fourth. Okay, there it is. Okay, now that's easy for us. This is one-third u to the third minus one-fifth u to the fifth plus c. And there we have it. That's how we can deal with a situation like this. Notice we have an odd power of cosine, even power of sine, and this is a method that we can work. Now, I don't recommend trying to memorize approaches like when you have an odd cosine and even sine, do this or that. I'm just, I'm recommending you use the basic idea and think through the problem. Okay. Now let's take a look at a trigonometric integral involving tangent. So let's suppose tangent cubed dx. Okay, now, with this one, with tangent, we think about when, you know, when we have tangent raised to a power like this, we think about the Pythagorean identities for tangent. And remember that is tangent squared x plus 1 equals secant squared x. Okay. Or another way to say that is tangent squared x equals secant squared x minus one. Okay, so there we could we could use that. Now the key is here, notice it involves tangent squared. Well, so maybe a good place to start would be to write this integral as tangent squared x times tangent x. That might be a good place to start since, you know, we're thinking maybe I'll use this identity. Now, here's the thing. I, could, I can go ahead now, because, see, I know tangent and secant are related through the derivative as well because the derivative of tangent is secant squared. So, with that in mind, and, and what I want in this integrand, I would like to have tangent and secant squared in there. That's what I want, because then I can let u be tangent and du be secant squared. That's what I want. So I want to try to work in secant squared. That's my thinking. Well, let's see here. So what we've got is we've got secant squared x minus 1. That's tangent squared times tangent. Hmm, okay, look at this. Here's tangent, and here's secant squared. If I let u be tangent, du would be secant squared x, but I've got this minus 1, so that's troubling. So, so let's see what we can do to maybe uh, help the situation. Let me distribute through here. So I've got tangent 
x secant squared x minus tan x. Hmm. Well, if it was just this, if it was just tangent x secant squared x, I'd be home free. But it's got this minus tangent. So I will just break this up into two integrals. I've got tangent x secant squared x dx, of course, and then minus tan x. There, about out of room over there on the right. Okay, there we have it. So I have two integrals that I can maybe do something with. Now I'm going to take this first one. I'm going to let u equal tan x. Then du is equal to secant squared x dx. Ah, that's nice. So I've got u du. Now that's an integral I can deal with. See, u du. Now, for this one here, I've got tangent. Well, actually, if I just view that as sine x over cosine x, and then if I let, oh, let's say w equal cosine x, then dw equals negative sine x. That means that negative dw equals sine x dx. Ah, oh, then I've got that one. So, so here's what I've got. I've got u du minus, uh, well, put this minus in, that make a plus, um, du or d, dw over w. There it goes. See? There was a minus in front, but so I replaced the uh, sine x dx with negative dw. Ah, so here we have it. Now, just the integration. So we've got one-half u squared plus the natural log of absolute value of w plus c. And then we could always, you know, substitute back in. But that's how we could deal with an integral like this, where we have tangent raised to a power. Now, let's consider an integral like this one where we have tangent and secant together. Now, first thing we think about, we see powers of tangent and powers of secants. So we're thinking Pythagorean identity. We're thinking about using this identity right here. Tangent squared x plus 1 equals secant squared x. That's what we're thinking about. And another thing we're thinking about is we know that the derivative of tangent is secant squared. And also we know the derivative of secant is secant x tan x. So we keep these things in mind because we're thinking we're going to need to use a Pythagorean identity and then we're going to need to make a u substitution and we want du to be something that will help us. So, so let's see what we've got here. Here's, a, here's something we could do. Thinking about derivative of secant is secant tangent. Notice these are both odd powers. Maybe, maybe I could rewrite them this way. Maybe I could peel uh, tangent off and get tangent squared x, peel one of the secants off. Now, the reason I did that is because now, dig what, what I have here. I have tangent squared x. Well, I can write that as secant squared x minus 1. And then, of course, I've got secant to the fourth x. And then I've got secant x tan x. So what I was trying to do I want to get in a situation where I can let u be tangent and then du is secant squared. Or I can let u be secant x and then du would be secant x tan x. And, and look what I have here. I have secant here, secant here, and then I have secant tangent here. So 
if I let if I let you be seeking X, then D U is seeking X tan X. Well that's what we that looks nice. So so now look what we've got here. We've got U squared minus one times U to the fourth D U. A simple integral. A toddler could could find this antiderivative. So let's see what we've got now. We've got u to the sixth minus u to the fourth, like that. Okay, and then we just have the power rule for integration. There we have it. So, so the idea here with these trigonometric integrals is we're thinking the Pythagorean identities, and then we're trying to, if we have sine or cosine together, we're trying to get it where we can let u be one of them and du is the other part. And that's the same thing for tangent and secant. We want to use the Pythagorean identities, and then we want to try to let u be one thing and then du, you know, have it set up like this.